Yo what up guys so in today's video what I want to do is basically show you how to use Hydra for beginners and people who are very very inexperienced or maybe you're lacking some knowledge. So basically I want to show you how to use Hydra. It is very very easy to use now. In today's video what I'm going to do is just show you how to use Hydra as a brute forcing or dictionary attack against a service. I'm not going to show you how to brute force login pages because that will want to make that as another video. The reason is because it requires me a bit more talking and a bit more explaining it requires also you don't need to use burp suite for that but you can it makes everything easier if you do or if you're very very experienced with um inspector tools you can use inspector tools so i want to basically take my time i want to record in the next video so the first thing we need to do is we need a basically service to attack right so the first thing you should do is run an nmap scan or if maybe you know that the service is running certain certain services, what you can do is you can brute force basically any of these, right? Uh, FTP is a file transfer protocol. FTP uh, basically is a web server that, well, it's a file server, right? It contains files, you can upload files, you can download files, you can transfer files. Uh, unfortunately, FTP is not actually secure, uh, so you won't see as much FTP used around in the world, if I'm not wrong. It should be SFTP, which is secure. And there's also SSH, now SSH is secure, and by the way, FTP operates on port 21, 20 and 21, sorry. People, some people forget it's 20 and 21. And SSH operates on port 22. Now, you should not try and basically exploit, uh, sorry, brute force SSH. If you're doing CTFs, you won't, most likely, you will never brute force manage to brute force SSH because that would be too easy. Unless you're doing it very, very easy, then you might be able to brute force now however i always like like to leave brute forcing for the end why brute forcing is a very very long process it can take you many uh, hours or long it can take you days or years or months to brute force a very very long password this is why also long passwords and two-step verification is also important also keeping your emails protected or keeping your logins is very very good to prevent this from brute forcing right because if only have an email if you have an email you are able to attack but only if a, if you only have a password you are not able to attack because who are you gonna attack you're gonna brute force logins there's like for example let's let's say you're gonna brute force a like you have a password okay you have a password but what are you gonna brute force with fifty thousand combinations you wanna try to brute force and there's basically unlimited, right? Because it's easier to have a reused password than have a reused name, right? Because passwords, people like to reuse passwords and you wouldn't really see reused names, right? Because people always have their own sort of combinations of names and stuff. I mean, it is possible. I'm not saying it's not, but it's also easier to get a password cracked than the email login, right? So... Now that we know we can sort of choose an attack, let's say SSH is our attack, right, for today. Now we, I'll be basically explaining how to attack FTP as well. I'm not going to be croaking, cracking because I don't have the password for that. I have a password for SSH. Um, it would take me too long basically to crack into the machine again and get the password. So we're going to be brute forcing SSH today. So the first thing, you can actually clear this. We're not going to need this anymore. Oh, so it's important that you know that the port, right? Because sometimes what you might do, as you should also expand for example if this instead of this being http it would be ssh we also need to know this because they basically the the connection will be refused and you're going to get annoyed that it doesn't work it does work but you just need to specify the port which i will so, also show you to how to do that again uh, later sorry in a second so let's just clear this i already know what we're attacking so we're going to do is hydra minus h right now, you don't really need to worry about these switches. They're not really important for you. The really most important switches for you will be these ones for if you're a beginner. If you're a more advanced user, you will definitely use um, some other switches, for example, minus U, which sometimes makes brute forcing with users more faster. Let's just clear this. Okay, so we're gonna do Hydra and we're gonna do basically take the examples, right? So we have Hydra minus L user P and FTP at the IP address. Now, as you can see, there's a difference, right? Because this is Hydra capital, capital P and small L. Okay, what does this mean? 
basically capital L, sorry, small L means we have a login and capital P means we don't have a login, but we, we want to supply a word list with the passwords or user list to for, for the Hydra to basically progress and hack it for us, right? And you can also do the other way. You can also supply the user list and supply the password. And you can also do basically supply the password and supply the uh, login list, right? It's really up to you whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically use today, I'm going to show you how to brute force SSH. So what we're going to do is L and let's say I'm not the user. The user is root and the password is, we're going to supply the password. Actually, no, I'm going to do the first one with me knowing the password. Let me just get the password up. There we go. So the password is this, right? And we're going to do is SSH at the IP address of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 141, Okay. Now, SSH operates on port 22, which means we don't need to specify because the SSH is running on port 22, right? As I showed you on the NLAP scan, right? So we're going to do is just let this run. And as you can see, it takes like about less than a second. Um, I actually didn't tell you how long it took. Well, it took a second, right? It would be less than a second, but just the system would have to display the information. So it took a second, but it actually didn't. It was faster than that. So as you can see, port 22, SSH, um, host, right, 1010, 141, login, root, and the password. And it says one of one target successfully completed, one valid password found. Now, if it's on uh, basically unsuccessful, it will display that zero target has been found or zero whatever, it would give you a result, right? For example, if I was to do this, right? Then I'll just attack and I should take a, as you can see, one of one target completed, zero valid passwords found, right? So now what we can do is just log in with SSH, but we're not gonna do it for now because I want to show you on Hydra how to do using password lists, right? So now this is basically the easiest combinations you can do. So Hydra, we're gonna do passwordless now. I'm gonna show you. So actually, so we're going to go desktop first. Make sure that you're basically where the passwords list are. Uh, either you give it an absolute um, pathing, which means you go from the here, which means you go from here to see the user share word lists, and you give them the password. For example, Roku TXT, right? You can cd into roku but you can cd into word lists which then you have word lists right here now uh, you need to know the difference for example that's directory bust you would use that for password breaching um metas plug i don't know what's end i've never used that nmap you would not use nmap for scanning passwords because there's scripts as well if i'm not wrong what does actually nmap have never mind nothing interesting um seclist seclist has good basically it's a good um, passwords because it has a lot of directories as you can see it has quite a lot so discovery would avoid you would use passwords um, usernames and that's it to be honest and there's further stuff there right so we're going to go back to yeah we run the directory because there's basically on the try hack me is a bit different than your actual user uh, sorry than your actual uh, Kali machine so what we're going to do now is use Hydra. We're going to use capital L and we're going to use, because we're in desktop, we don't need to specify the absolute pathing. We can just use the uh, the name of the directory or the file. So we can do this pass, sorry, user txt. And we can do this capital P pass txt. Now we're going to do SSH, the same thing. And uh, let me just get the password again. 10, 10, 1, 4, 1, 1, 8. There we go. So now it's going to take a second. It's going to go through these borders, as you can see, it says, 154 login tries against 11 logins and 14 passwords. Now we can actually lower the tasks. Now it's actually recommended to reduce the tasks. The reason you would reduce is to prevent DDoSing the server or making the server drop or bypassing the bypassing the intrusion detection systems, which may actually drop your requests, right? So you would drop it to make it look like an actual user is attacking, but it's not, it's you. So as you can see, it has found the password. It took us about well, 25 seconds. Not bad, that's actually quite quick. Um, not really, because I used to get like a thousand requests, something like that, I can't remember really, it was, it was a lot of requests. So this is how you basically use Hydra, right? Now, 
what would happen if the for example if the ssh would be on port 2222 oh sorry i used the wrong um, flag switch whatever it was s right and all you do is if i'm not wrong oh sorry yes if it's you would basically do ssh and specify the port as well and there you go right you just do ssh and you would specify the port as well because it needs to know the service and the port it's attacking on sorry i used the wrong switch here that's why it gave me an error so as you can see it's gonna go basically log in and it should crack within a couple seconds as well it's not a long list um, as you can see I found the password now I'm gonna show you how to basically log in for SSH because some of you may not know so what we're gonna do is basically just zoom it up we're gonna do SSH at username for us it's root and the password we have found that we can just copy the password yeah so as i promised i just want to show you before i finish the video how to specify a port so basically and by the way you may get a like it says the first time you connect to a new machine or like a new ip address uh, it might ask you the authenticity of host whatever whatever just say yes it doesn't really matter nothing will happen just say yes right so ssh root at the ip address right and as you can see it's a different port Right, as you can see, if I press enter, it says connection refused. And you might have this if you, for example, as I said, if it runs on another port. So if it runs on port, like example, if SSH was to run on port 2222 on this machine, you need to specify the port 2222, right? 2222, whatever the port is running, SSH, that's why you need to also make sure that whenever you're enumerating, you're enumerating fully to the full extent that you're not missing any ports right so as i said right so if i change to 22 which is the uh, the port that uh, the ssh is running on and also it's the correct port it'll ask for a password right so if you specify the password which is for us it's n10906 as you can see it says we're logged in right and basically once you get the blue Username, it means you're SSH into another device, which is something we as an ethical hacker or a hacker we want, because that means we are able to exploit further and we are able to basically do whatever we want. For example, we could run sudo l, oh, never mind, sudo l, right? So if I run the password, for example, this will give us, as you can see, uh, we need to look for another exploit because I say, sorry, user root may not run sudo on retrotech pod, which means we are not in a bad situation because you can also find other exploits right um for privilege escalation to get root because once you get root you are sort of the king of the machine that's what you want so hope you've enjoyed something hope you learned something don't forget to leave a like subscribe comment check out my uh, udemy courses check out my twitter subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for other videos as i said in the next video or in the upcoming weeks i'll try to post my uh, http post form or http brute forcing basically login pages and uh, online, right? So see you later guys and love you all.